welcome in it's monkey mar before we get into today's video please make sure you click that subscribe button the bell for notifications and of course the like without further ado let's get into part two susan morphew let's dig into the husband a little deeper i I am definitely going to make this a very quick video. I just want to update on a couple of things that I decided to look into and as you guys know, like I've said before, that I am usually looking at this for the first time with you guys. So on that note, let me go into the property records because they did buy the house where she went bike riding from it was two years and a month ago almost to the day april 12 2018 was the transfer date to a morphew barry l and susan r it's a nice piece of property so they have owned that together and they moved from indiana and he has a lot of businesses but let's go see if we can hunt down the Susan Morphew Corporation non-funded. Okay. Is it my imagination or is the husband really buffed, muscular for his age? He almost looks like he does steroids, but I wouldn't know about that. I wanted to look in the area to see if there were any sex offenders because we never know if maybe she did go for a ride and in one of those five houses maybe a pervert did live but there are zero sex offenders registered within two miles of their address so unless somebody was riding down highway 50 and just so happened to see her and took her I don't know something is not right especially in that area Let's go see how far actually Denver is from this area and if somebody could actually maneuver that to say they were in another city. I don't know. Something about this whole entire case to me is weird. A lot of things that happened in Colorado to me are very weird. But the drive from their house to Denver it's two hours and 42 minutes and honestly it almost looks like a straight shot right into Denver so I don't know guys I mean is it possible yes um, what do you guys think drop your comments below because you know I love to hear from you guys all right guys my little chihuahua monkeys her name actually is acting up so you might hear her say hi but I think we should dig a little deeper dig a little deeper so since I'm so addicted to ancestry no I'm not gonna start a tree for the Morpheus but I decided to go in and check out marriages and see if I could find any divorce papers or anything because remember in the article I read it was Miss Morphew, not Mrs. Miss. Could have been a typo, like I said, but my curious little mind had to go and check it out. So I did find a marriage, and I haven't looked yet, but it is in August 5th, 1994, in Madison, Susan R. Moorman. Shall we have a look? And of course we should have a look. And here we go. We have Barry Amorview, landscape foreman, BS degree from Purdue, birthplace Arkansas, and then we've got a Susan Mormon. B.A. Purdue, 23 years old. He was 26. 
And that's it. Marriage, August 5th, 1994. Alright guys, so that's what it is. And I see nothing on a divorce. But there is their marriage license. I truly hope they find her. Like, what are the odds that somebody was happened to drive down that road and kidnapped her and has her tied up somewhere? I don't know. And why was the husband in Denver during a COVID lockdown when everybody was not supposed to be traveling? I don't know. Something is very, very fishy, in my opinion. All right, so I really think that's it because, oh, nope, nope, let's go look at and see if that has a website on the nonprofit corporation for the domestic abuse Susan Morphew company. I am going to have to dig a little deeper into the business. I did find a couple of things. This website right here for the Susan R. Morphew Hope Foundation Incorporated, it does list human resource and compensation five people. So it, it's a Stephen Dolvin, a Marcy McLachian, Barry Morphew, and Susan Morphew, but all the dates are the same, zero, zero, zero. So I don't know, but here, currently tax exempt, currently tax deductible, corporation subsection is all up to date as of April 17th and April 14th at 2020. So, interesting, huh? I'm not even sure if the corporation is still there. If we jump over here to the Susan R. Morphew Hope Foundation, it's got the employee EIN number in care of name Barry L. Morphew. It gives the address, charitable organization, the foundation organization which receives a substantial part of its support from governmental unit or the general public. Interesting, I think. Filing requirements income less than 25000 per year. Hmm. But is the building still in Indiana? And does Mr. Morphew own it? We're going to have to look into that next. And then I am going to wrap this video up. And if I have to make a part three, I will, but I am going to wait and see what unfolds, and hopefully they find her alive and well, because this crap coming out of Colorado for the last year and a half or so is um, a little mind-blowing. So the address connected to the Susan Morphew Hope Foundation Corporation nonprofit organization is the address that was on that prior sheet I showed you with the EIN number. And the owners of that property are Barry Morphew and Susan Morphew. So, let's take a ride by that property and see what we see. So this must be the old address in Indiana where they come from when he was probably a farmer. This is a serious, vast farmland. I don't know how far Indiana is from Denver, but now I'm curious. Look at all of this land. Let's go down and have a closer look. I mean, this is corn fields for days. And this must be the house. They definitely like living in the middle of nowhere. And of course you can't get up the driveway. So let's go down the street a little bit. See what we can find. Yeah, serious, serious farm country. 
but it does still say that they are the owners of this property I do not know if they are selling it they sold it but they are still listed as the current owners that is a lot of property so I am at a standpoint I do not know what to think I think it's bizarre that she left her bike sitting up against the tree I guarantee you if somebody took her off her bike her bike probably would not be against the tree and the supposed text message that was sent to the neighbor if I didn't return call the police because at first when I heard the neighbor called the police I thought well that neighbor is definitely nosy hmm what are your guys thoughts on this let me just drop this in here real quick I actually received an email around 4 p.m. Eastern time today saying that a nosy detective spoke to an officer out in Colorado they believe the case is over and they have a body but are pretending not to say they are not sure who did it hmm anyways I think that is going to wrap up today's videos uh, guys I want to thank you all for coming in thank you for watching please like or dislike whichever you prefer and uh, subscribe everyone stay safe from COVID-19 and have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world and stay vigilant